Oh, wait a minute. I really should take the filament out of this first. Where is my plug? There we are. Why are you over there? You're supposed to be... Okay, you got to mind your own right now, don't you, you dumb little thing? No, 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 you don't. That is better. Okay, let's uh, warm this up first. The screen's not working anymore on the 2.4. That kind of rhymes, but I'm gonna, I wanna put a bigger display on it anyways. Okay, chilling on a Friday. I just don't wanna be alone while I'm working in the studio, so I thought I'd go live. Plus I wanna record what I'm doing. Um, what's my IP for this printer? I think it's 117. No, you change on me every single time, you silly thing. Okay. Hey, Cliff D, we are just, what are we up to? I am going to take that printer there and start some modifications on it. Still haven't got my Tri-Zero parts in yet. So I am going to start modifying my 2.4. We're going to be doing a... Bunch of changes to the 2.4, including we're going to be putting a different hot end. I forget what it's called. Um, it is called the. Um, I'll tell you in a second, because my my supplier told me that he's got the kits in, but uh, we are putting on a XOL toolkit, toolhead, XOL toolhead. We're going to put on some uh, Ramus front idlers, and we're going to put on a beacon probe. And I'm also thinking of inverting the electronics on this thing, too. I don't know if I want to go that far, because all the electronics are perfect right now. So it's just it's so nice not having to turn the printer upside down on the, on the Trident to uh, do anything with the electronics. So we'll see. We'll see how far I want to go with it. Just when I got it printing nice and tuned up nicely... Um, yeah, I want to <laughs> start fiddling with it again. So, but definitely, um, if, if nothing else, it's getting a beacon pro put on it. So, yeah. Um, so I want to heat it up, but I don't remember the IP address for it. So I got to do a quick search with my, um, I can never remember the name of that flipping program, but it's on my desktop here somewhere. Advanced IP something or other. It's an IP scanning. There it is right there, advanced IP scanner. So I just scan my IPs and then I can figure out what IP address things on. I just want to, I just want to unload the filament before I, um, hey, non-fam. I just want to unload the filament before I start taking the tool head apart. I, I always catch myself in that. I, I take the tool head apart, go to pull the hot end off and there's filament stuck in it. So I'm thinking of also um, putting the Orbiter 3 on this. I'm not sure. 
we will see as we go. Um, yeah. Did that camera freeze? No, it didn't. Good. Okay, so I just, where's my IP scanner? What's it say my IP address is for this one? Boron 2.4 is 222. Oh, is it really now? Let's see here. Is it 222? Did it change? Yes, it must have changed. I'm sure it's on, but oh yeah, I know it's on because I can see a light on it. Dang, well then what is it? This isn't telling me much. Oh, 239 maybe, because that's showing main sale. Let's try 239. There we go. That'd be the 2.4. Okay, so let's just um, let's just heat this up to 220, and we will remove the filament that is currently in it. Oh, sorry. Dab, 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 dab. How about this one? This one's not bad for now. While I remove the filament. You can probably hear my washing machine going in the background, too. So, yeah, we're going to remove the hot end. I don't know. I want to put the Ramus idlers on it. I've got to print the parts yet, too, which I'm going to do. Um, but I And I'm not going to change the color of this one. I, I like the color of this. But um, I don't know if my belts are long enough to take, because i got to take my belts off to um, change the idlers. I don't know if I have long enough belts to refeed them. Um, but there's a trick I might do to do that. Um, it's the way I changed the belts before. But I do have spare belts. I just don't know if they're long enough. I have a lot of belt pieces. So if I can get away without having to um, buy new belts for this, I'd like to. But the belts have got to come off partially at least to get the idlers in. So... But for now, I'm just going to um, rip the thing apart, rip some things off of it and so forth, um, take off the uh, clicky probe that's on it because we're going to replace it with a beacon probe. And yeah, uh, we got the rat rig over there that's working beautifully now. So rat rig, we're all done on the rat rig. Why are you set to follow my face? This other camera is really annoying me. There we go. There we go. I think when I put my hand up and make any hand motions, it picks it up. And we should be pretty close to unloadable temperature now. So I'm just going to manually unload this. There we go. That'll do it. Perfect. And I'm just going to cool it off now. And we'll go down to zero. Zero. Or as they say in the land of the French, zero as non-fam laughs at me with my attempt at French. And we'll just pull this filament out. Okay, so while we're letting this thing cool off. I am going to pull off the screws. This fan is on, isn't it? Oh, it's just very quiet compared to my rat rig cooling fan. So let me grab a magnetic tray here. Put all my screws in. And I promise and I swear to myself and I swear to everybody that watches me, once I get the upgrades done to this, I am not touching this or the Trident again. Unless it's major, major upgrades that make me go, holy crap, I've got to do this. Is, um, I got to move on. They got to, you know, enough is enough. 
we did the rat rig. We did a major overhaul in the rebuild on the rat rig. We did a major overhaul and rebuild on the Trident. This is not going to be a major rebuild. As I say, I would love to do the inverted electronics on this, but it's just too much hassle because all the electronics are working fine. So, Mika Steve, hey, how are you, sir? Just uh, just wanted some company on Friday night. Well, I did some work down here, so I thought I'd go live. What the heck? It's always a good time for a live stream. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna redo these clips. I'm taking this back off of this because I'm not enclosing this printer, so I don't need. Um, I do not need. I just want to wait till this thing cools down to 50 before I. And for some reason, as I say, this screen's not. This display is not working anymore on it. So I'm gonna put a bigger display on it. What are we down to? We're down to 125. We just want to wait till that cools down a little bit. Although it doesn't matter if it melts part of my things. I'm going to be replacing that anyways. But anyway, so on the back, um, let me zoom out on this camera here a little bit. Oh, it's the wrong way. This is out. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to remove this because I don't plan to enclose these printers, this printer anymore. So um, let's get this Bowden out. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to keep this printer enclosed. I have, I have my bamboos. I have my K1 as enclosed printers and I don't need large enclosed printers at this point in time. But then, you know, the, the thing about it is that I can always enclose these if I ever change my mind later. So that is not a concern of mine. What are we at temperature wise? 108 degrees. I guess once it gets down around 70 or something, that'll be fine. It's probably cool enough now to shut it off, but I won't. But in the meantime, I can take these clips off. I don't like these. These things break too easy now. So I've changed my mind about a bunch of stuff moving forward. See, these things just snap too easy now. They're held together with filament. And um, the filament just gets brittle after a while. And they literally just snap right off. If I ever did these kind of uh, clips again, let me back this up a little bit here. Move out of the way, you little tripods. There we go. If I ever did these kind of clips again, I would uh, use little metal pins instead of um, filament. Because as I say, you just bang and the filament just is so brittle. So, not a big deal. Not a big deal. I'm just going to switch to this camera here because... So I think we're okay to now power this down, so let me go ahead and... We are down, yeah, we're down at 86 degrees is fine. So I'm just going to power that off. There we go. And I can unplug so we can finish taking the hot end apart. But I'm going to actually, first I'm going to just get the rest of these clips off now that I started. Take the back off. These are going straight into the scrap box because I'm not going to use these again. As I say, if I do, I'll probably come up with a different system for clipping these things in. And then um, do it properly. These are these worked fine for, for what they were doing. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's still being held in. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, it's too big. Need this one. Who's here? Jose Ferreira. Hello. Hello. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Oh, and you're on Twitch. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm dual streaming on Twitch So um, and, and YouTube. So Jose is over on Twitch there, guys. There's Jose. And uh, Jose, over here on YouTube, we have Nonfam, Cliff D, Mika Steve. So, yeah, we have a few people here. Let's see. What do we have? Um, two on Twitch and nine on uh, YouTube. Hi, guys. Hi, everybody. Say hello to all the Twitch people. Twitch people, say hello to all the YouTube people. Hi, YouTube people. Hi, Twitch people. I wish you could see both chats. 
but oh well we know we know who each other are and we know we all you know it's we're one big family here what's non-fam saying zero was an easy one to translate zero <laughs> But let's see with one, two, three, they are a bit harder. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, six, sept, huit, neuf. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, eight, eight, sept, huit, neuf, dix, un, deux, un, treize, um, um, un, de, un, de, I don't know. I sucked, I sucked at math. <laughs> HVAC A to Z, Sergio is in the house. Grant's Auto Essentials is in the house. Teza is in the house. Wow, what's up, folks? And as I say, I, we have Jose saying, hello, YouTube people. We have a couple of, uh, couple of um, people on the dark side over on um, Twitch. And then we have our YouTubers. So for those of you that just joined me, I am... Um, Doing a few things, we as we as you all know, we finished the rat rig. The rat rig is back in its home, which is great to have off the bench because it's massive, right? And so we've got the uh, two point four on the bench now. Um, we're gonna on Sunday. We're gonna do as I said last week. We're gonna work on the um, on the um, <sighs> K one. But uh, in the meantime, I'm getting this uh, two point four prepped to do um, some, not, I'm not going to call them major upgrades. I'm going to call them significant upgrades that we're doing on the 2.4. We're taking any enclosures off because I really don't want to enclose this printer. Um, so, yeah. Shadell is in the house. I went to 13. Well, I know 20, like Van, Van de Hoe, Van Deux, Van Trois, Van Cat, Van Saint, Van Six, Van Set, Van Huit, Van Neuf. Um, 30 is, uh, I don't remember 30. It's been a long time since I've known my French. I know, um, uh, voila la classe à l'école, il est huit heures et demi. <laughs> it's something about voila la classe. Here is a class in the schoolroom. It is 8.30 in the morning. I think I said that. I have no idea. I haven't taken, you know, the shame of it is that I'm French Canadian. And I am terrible at French, but I think at my age, and yes, this will just be an excuse, but I think it's really difficult to learn a new language when you get up to be as old as I am. But I, 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 I'm amazed at those people that can speak multiple languages because you not only have to speak in it, you have to um, think in those languages too. Brent Ferguson is in the house from Texas. Say hello to Brent. I'm flashing these things up a little bit so that the Twitchers, which we only have three Twitchers, um, so we're just flashing them so the Twitchers can see who's on, who's in the house. And the Twitchers, so far on Twitch, we have Jose Ferrer is the only one that's spoken up on Twitch so far that I can see. Yes, I think that's it so far on Twitch. And he, and he, you subscribed on Twitch, didn't you, Jose? Let's see. You did. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Ah, okay. Oh, one more. And the only reason I went back to Twitch and I'm going to start dual streaming on Twitch again is because um, apparently they don't mind you doing that now. And um, I haven't been on Twitch in a long time and they just sent me a payment for $50. And I thought, what did I do to deserve $50 from Twitch? So I thought, hey, let's start streaming on Twitch again. Maybe I'll make a little extra pocket coin. From streaming on Twitch. Jose's over on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Jose came over to the fun side. No offense to the Twitchers. Twitchers, Twitchers. We love our Twitchers as well. I know some people that, uh, uh, Brent, I'll tell you, I know some people that uh, will stream Twitch and YouTube. Um, watch me on both. We're not doing much trouble. So what we're doing is just getting the, um, 2.4 here, which is running perfectly well, by the way. Um, I, I honestly, if, if I'm being truthful, I'm not a fan of the clicky probe I have on the 2.4 because it's very, very finicky. And it's probably to do with the way I have it set up or something, but I'm just not a fan of the clicky. So 
we are going to be, um, we're going to put the, we're going to do a few things to this puppy. Um, we're leaving the color. Uh, I said earlier, I would love to invert the electronics, but I don't want to go there. Everything's working really well electronic wise and so forth with this. So we are going to um, beacon probe. I have a beacon probe right here. That's going to go on the 2.4. We are going to put Ramus front idlers on it. Okay. We are going to put, I have to look this up because I keep forgetting the name of it. We are going to put the XOL tool head on. We're going to totally change the hot end. We're going to put the XOL tool head. I have to find a version of that or create a version of that where I can mount the um, beacon probe. Um, we are going to get rid of the, get rid of the clicky, of course, because we're putting the beacon on. Um, what else was I going to do to this one? And I'm just taking the back off because I'm not keeping this as an, I'm not putting an enclosure on this one at the moment. I don't, I don't have a need for an enclosed printer too much. If I want to print my uh, parts that I'm going to print for this, I'm going to just print them on the bamboo. Uh, I mean, it's there. It works good. It's fast. So you love to watch Pezlas on Twitch. Of course. Yeah. There's a lot of good Twitchers that still Twitch. I mean, sometimes depending on if I've had my medication or not, I twitch. I'm kidding. That's a really, really bad joke. Um, so forgive me. Um, I'm going to need this one now. So we're just taking this apart and prep for doing the, um, the upgrades or the modifications, upgrades, whatever you want to call them. So we're doing a few things. So I'm taking this back off, which means actually I should just pop this fan off first. So I don't really need this back on here as an enclosure type thing. Is this the right size? Of course it's not. It's this one. So yeah, we're just, um, we're just doing some stuff. Oh, this has little washers in it. But we're not going to change the color on this. As I say, I would love more than anything to do inverted electronics on this because I love not having to turn a printer upside down to get to the electronics, but it's a lot of hassle. I'd have to pretty much take the whole thing apart, and I don't really want to do that. As it is, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping as it is, I can get away with, um, with the belts that I have on there without having to put new belts on for when I do the Ramus idlers. Trouble with the dual stream watching is the different, differing paths. One always delays by about two seconds due to the network rates and traffic. Yeah, I imagine that's right, Tezza. Good point. Okay, let's pop this off. This back is going to fall. Am I going to be able to catch it? Let's see. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Save whatever parts I can. I'm not going to toss this. I will keep this as a unit, just like this, in case I change my mind and ever want to enclose this. So I will hang on to that. Right over there with all the other covers that I am hanging on to. There we go. So we have now a bare open. It's much easier to work on like this too. So that's that's uh, another, another good reason. I should have raised my gantry. I think I'm gonna do that real quick. Since I still have this on, I'm just going to go plug it in again. Raise my gantry. It's going to be easier. I, yeah, I could raise it by hand. Well, theoretically, I couldn't. That'd be a little tougher. I'm going to raise the gantry up a bit. Pop it on again. And it's just going to be easier to work on the gantry and get the belts in and out if I'm up a little, you know, up a little bit higher. So everybody's having a good Friday night, I hope. Andrew Humphreys in the house. There he is, the man himself, Andrew. Hey, how are you? Jose says, hello, Andrew. Oh, you guys are on YouTube. I don't have to say that. I think there's only, let's see, we have two Twitchers. Yeah, Twitchers. Twitchers. Okay. Let's see if we have... Well, this will be funny to see if it's going to... Home, home good for me. Okay, let's see if we are connected. Let's try again. And come on, come on. I know you can connect. 
there we are. And let's home all. Let's see what happens here. Here, where's my... There we go. See if this works. So putting the uh, beacon on this is going to be able to let me remove a fair bit of hardware on this. Okay, so we homed. So now we're going to move the Z. Um, oh, wrong way. <laughs> I'm going to go this way. I was initially just going to put the beacon probe on, and I don't know, maybe that's all I really need to do is put the beacon probe on for now. Man, the hot end's working good. You know, um, the, the, the front, the Ramus front idler, is, it, it's a cosmetic thing. Um, ah, what should I do? Should I just work on the beacon probe for now? Even so, I still have to take the front end, the hot end off, because I got to get under here to take the uh, clicky probe off in order to put a beacon probe, and I probably have to print a new part with a beacon probe mount on it. Let's go up 50 more. There, that's good height for it. Okay, we're going to shut her down. There we go. You're rebuilding a 2 4 and it's a bear. Stephen Machado is in the house too. Look at that. Hello. Andrew just got here, so there will be trouble. Yeah, I know. I know. And 3D Proto Fab, yes, Beacon is incredible. I don't know. I'm in love with the Beacon. Now, there's talk out there about Beacon knockoffs. Um, you can go to AliExpress. Um, I don't know any of those places. Get, but um, they the, it, apparently it's not as easy to configure Clipper with the knockoffs. Uh, I've heard I've heard horror stories about them. The thing I like about Beacon, there I am. The thing I like about the Beacon probe is that they um, do not follow my face. I did not ask you to do that. Behave. Um, the thing I like about the Beacon is um, they do support really well. They've answered their emails really quick for me. They appreciate the fact that I'm showing off the Beacon on my channel. And a few extra dollars is worth that support and peace of mind, in my opinion. So <laughs> trouble reading when you're face palming. <laughs> There you go, guys. Okay, so we got to take the hot end off anyway. So let's go ahead and power that off and unplug that. We'll just leave that plug handy in case I decide I want to plug it in again. So we do have the hot end partially off. This has the um, um, separate, um, whatever you want to call it, control plug. But as I say, I don't know, maybe I'll keep this hot end the way it is. I just have to see what I need to reprint um, for the beacon probe once I remove the clicky probe components. Um, I'm not quite sure because I got to, you know, take into consideration where the nozzle is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And maybe for the beacon probe, I just need to print a new part to insert into here. I haven't looked into that yet. So we will figure that out. So now that this is off, I've got to open this and unplug my hot end. What am I stepping on here? Ah, just get out of my way. Okay, is this the right size? Of course it's not going to be. Oh, yes, it is the right size. Surprise, surprise. Okay. So open that up. We will disconnect thermostat and heater. So this guy will come off. Come on, get out of there. There we go. So we have that off. There's our ADXL on here. So let's take that to the side. And next, there's where we want to take this part off. So we have all this. This is all connected. And this is the um, unplug this. This is the probe, all part of the clicky probe. And that I have to take off two screws from in here. Now let's zoom this, see if I can zoom this in a bit. Oh, come on, why are you falling on the camera? Okay, we're going to go like this. We're going to zoom you right in. That's not bad. 
Uh, maybe out a little bit here. Here we go. Love this camera for my close-up camera. It's a great little camera. Um, now I need, uh, where's my other light? Um, where'd I put it? I charged, there it is. Oh, it's charged. Okay, good. I had it on the charger. I'm just going to stick my, ah, don't drop those tripods. I'm just going to stick this light in one of these little tripods. Just for the, just, just so you guys can have a little bit because I care so much about how you see this. So I can go like this. I can turn this on. There we go. We light up that area a little bit more. So let's see, it's that versus that. Look at the difference, right? Now you can see what I'm doing, sort of. Now I'm going to put my hands in the way, right? So I'll go figure here, move this over here. That's a bit better as long as I don't look at it. So we're going to take this off. Okay, I'm going to take this one off. So all we're doing right now is removing the clicky probe components. There we go. Now I've got the wire running through, through here. I don't know if I'm going to, oh, I guess I could get that screw right out of there so I can pull that down. Come on out, screw. Come on out. There it comes. Being stubborn. Where's my tweezers? Um, where'd I put my tweezers? Right here. Let's grab this screw out of there. Come on. Come on. Just get out of the hole. Are you unscrewed all the way? Maybe that's why you're not. Oh, stop it. Maybe you're, that's why you're not coming out. Are you unscrewed all the way? Come on. Ah, there we go. Note to self. Okay, so now this is out. This. I don't know if that's going to pull through or if that's going to fit. Is that going to come down? Did I just screw myself up here? I think I just screwed myself up. I'm going to have to take this off. Although, probably, maybe, hang on a second here. I think, do, 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 do. Because that plug's not going to fit down through that hole. So, or are you, or is it? You know what you do in a case like this? You just take these and you go like this. You go... You get that off of there. Now I should be able to pull this up back up through here. I shouldn't have. There we go. There we go. And then that wire will just pop right out. There we go. Clicky probe base out of there. But I'm going to save some screws out of that. So because I'm a miser, if I can rescue a screw and a bolt and a magnet or two, I do. Nuno Vincent is with us on this wonderful Friday night. Hello, Nuno Vincent. We are doing stuff. Now at the point of no return. Yeah, when you, uh, Jack Faxon, what are you working on today, Tim? We are prepping the um, Voron 2.4. I was going to do a lot more things with it, but we are getting the Voron 2.4 and doing some updates on it. Some upgrades, updates if you want. Uh, right now we're prepping it to put the uh, beacon probe on it. Whoa, dude. To put a beacon probe on it. So that's what we're up to right now. So I had to take off the old clicky mount. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do the Ramus idlers, to be honest, guys, because uh, I've got them. I don't know if I'll do it yet. Maybe not at this point because I don't have any new belts. And these belts are just cut to a perfect length. And if I take these belts off to get the idlers changed out, the belts are going to be way too short to feed through again. And really the only difference between these idlers and the Ramus idlers is that they're, they're a little 
they're a little nicer looking idler. That's really the only difference. So I'm not going to um, worry about that right now, I don't think. So now we're going to swing this around to the side a bit here. And you cannot see at this angle. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch back over to this guy here. And we're going to grab that little tripod that fell. There it is. Gravity knows no bounds. So I'm going to take this camera and just take this off this tripod for now. I like this tripod. It's good for the higher angles, but there we go. Let's put that off to the side and we're going to screw this little tripod on. This is my good close-up camera. It gives you a pretty nice sharp image. So now, there, now I can put this like this. Now if I switch to this, you can see a little bit of nothing. <laughs> good aiming, good aiming. There we are. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, Clicky Pro base here. So there's the probe itself. So we're going to take that off. I'm going to sacrifice parts, get the screws out, save the little switch. Let's just zoom out a bit. We don't need to be that close. Okay, these are M5s or M3s. Those are M5s. So so we're going to pop these off. My finger's right in the way I know, but oh well. So there's the probe holder off of there, and I just dropped a screw somewhere. There it is, right there. Okay. Okay, so we got the probe holder off. Where'd that other screw go? <laughs> I'll find it eventually. It'll be down here somewhere. And so we will, I'll just sacrifice or, you know, salvage some parts from this as well. So we got the holder off. We've got the slide in nuts here, which they're just going to stay there. Don't have to worry about that. Um, now the other thing we can take off, don't know if I need to, and I'll just see how much hassle it is or isn't, is I do not need, um, if I switch back over here, I don't need this with the beacon probe. I can get rid of this limit switch here. That's the Z switch, the Z limit switch. So that's just a matter of unplugging one plug and undoing two screws. And then it gets rid of that, which I might do. I might get rid of that. Um, there's no sense having it there. I don't need it with the beacon and this, I don't need that's for the back fan that we took off. That was for the case fan. Why did you automatically decide on XOL over one of the other mini tool heads like Dragon Burner? Um, oh, okay. See you later, Jose. Thank you so much for popping in. I do appreciate it. Um, just because my, my local guy, uh, it's a good question, Brent, too. My local guy, um, um, 3D Lab Tech, I asked him about, you know, I said, I, you know, what's new with, uh, with um, hot ends for the Vorons, et cetera. And he, he suggested the XOL and he's going to give me the upgrade kit for nothing. Um, I just have to buy the, I've got the hot ends. Uh, I've got the extruders, but I may get a um, Orbiter V3 for it. I haven't decided yet. Uh, just because he um, recommended it. Really. There, I know there's other ones out there, but uh, it looks cool. I like the look of it. It looks pretty simple. It looks lighter than this. So, yeah, no, no, no specific reason. I'm not familiar with them. Hello, Mr. Jerry. How are you, sir? Everybody say hi to Jerry and tune into his live stream tomorrow. Um... It's his hangout, maker hangout tomorrow, and I believe it is at, if I'm, he's moved it, and I think it's at 1 o'clock Mountain Standard Time, if I'm not mistaken, but Jerry will correct me, I am sure. Okay, so let's get rid of this. So we're going to just pop this 
we don't need this plugged in here anymore. Um, this is for the, um, this other plug that's on here is for the, um, oh, whatever that filter was called under there, which I don't need because I'm not enclosing this printer at the moment. Um, I don't know what this just fell off of. This is just a spare part, I guess. It just fell off when I unplugged that plug. Oh, well. Anyways. <laughs> All the fun stuff. And then I should be able to just... Oh, wrong size. Helps when you use the right size. And then this should just... Back this off. And this should just slide forward for me. There we go. So now I should just be able to pull this right off. There we go. So that's the other thing I like about the beacon, and uh, um, especially I, I learned on the Trident, is that you don't need this, you don't need this, you don't need any other um, hardware, basically, and, and it, it frees up a lot of uh, a lot of hardware and building on, on this, so it's pretty cool. XOL got a very nice update a few days ago. I heard. Yes, I did hear. Uh, but it's still on the experimental, not fully released. Yeah. Printed parts for it today. Going to try it with flex tap. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, so we got that done. Um, what else is under there? So I don't need these wires. I'm going to disconnect or just get rid of them because these are for the uh, filter that go under the bed. That's that carbon filter. This was for the chamber fan, which I'm not going to do. So we'll tuck those wires away a little bit later. That's fine. So for now, we have gotten rid of everything that we need to get rid of for the... Um, Beacon probe. But now we just need to, um, I need to find out what I need for a mount for the beacon. So I'm just going to see. So I, I'll leave this hot end for now until we get the beacon probe working. And then once I get the parts printed for the new um, hot end, I, I'll have a look and see and maybe do it. But I'm not going to do the idlers right now. Uh, simply because of, of the belts. I don't have enough uh, slack on the end of the belts to pull them out and then successfully put them in without a big headache. So we're going to leave that. So let's see if I slip this back on. And this has the, um, this is a, um, uh, the Voron Revo hot end that we have on here. And it is uh, with the, um, where'd I put it? Oh, it's right back here. And it's, this is the Clockwork 2 uh, extruder. So if I put that back up in here, so we are going to be looking. So I'm going to look and see what I can find for the Stealth Burner hot end for the Beacon Probe and hope I can get it to work on here because we need about three millimeters, maximum three millimeters between the nozzle tip and the probe. Uh, but this is adjustable, which is great. So I just need an insert in here that's going to take the beacon probe that I can adjust it so that we're at the right height. And there should be something out there. I'm sure there's something out there. I just haven't looked yet. So pop that light off for a sec. So let's have a look and see what I can find. Beefy idlers and XOL reduce belt path slightly. Oh, okay. I'll have more slack with the XOL is what you're saying. Okay, well then what I'll do is then perfect. If I have more slack with the XOL, then... Um, and what I'll likely do is um, do the XOL and the Ramus idlers at the same time. But for now, I just want to see about getting that beacon probe going. So my desk is a mess. Got all these parts all over it. I've got to get rid of some of the, uh, I should be able to salvage. Don't think those magnets are glued in. We'll figure that out in a bit. But let's have a quick look, see what I can find. I'm going to switch to main. There we go. So I am, you can see my mess now. Look at that. 
Uh, I'm going to see what I can find. So I just, all I do is simply Google stealth burner, oops, beacon probe mount for stealth burner. And then boom, beacon CW2 stealth burner alternative mounts. Beacon probe mount for Voron tap stealth burner for Voron tap stealth burner. Um, why would you put a beacon probe on a Voron tap? Hmm, I don't know. That's interesting. Um, is that not redundant having a beacon probe and a Voron tap? I guess you could probe to do your, I, anyways, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question that. It's because the belts on XWL don't clamp on between the mount and liner rail block like the stock boron. Okay, okay. Much easier to attach the belts. Then I can do that. Uh, tap for Z offset, beacon for fast meshing. Okay, so there, so basically you're using a tap. Um, again, oh. I guess tap for Z offset is good if you are um, changing your bed and everything. And, the thing, and I guess that is one disadvantage of the... Um, of the beacon on its own is that if you change beds, you've got to re re readjust your Z offset, which doesn't take long, really. So, I'm I'm uh, I'm 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 thinking that yeah no, um, okay. So let me look on printables and go um, beacon mount for stealth burner. Let's see what they come up with. Beacon probe mount for Voron stealth burner. X carriage. There we are. So here's what we found right here. So somebody, I knew somebody has done it. So right there is what we are looking at. And that's exactly what I want. So we're going to have a, a beacon mount go on there. It's going to be adjustable up and down. And that's exactly what it looks like, which is perfect. Per, that's simple and all I need. And I can probably print that in a matter of minutes on the uh, bamboo behind me. So let's just see. Yeah. Perfect. That's exactly, yeah, they've got a, uh, a um, bah, 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 different hot end on that um, brain fart. Too many, too many terms in my head. That That's a hot, I've got one sitting right here. What's that called again? Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, there's where the beacon probe is going to mount and then the wire just goes straight up through. So that's going to be perfect. So let's go ahead. And that's all I want. Something just real simple like that. Oh, and they even got the wire running up behind, which is fine. It's ideal. Okay. So something simple like that. So let's go ahead and go back. Let's find the files and there's an STL right there. Let's download that STL. Um, I don't, yeah, I should sign in because I don't want to sign up. I've already got an account. There we go. I think you get credit when you download a model or something. I have no idea. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. So let's go ahead and There y'all are. Rapido. Thank you. Rapido. Did you ever get the input shaper to work with the beacon on the right rig? Not yet, Nuno. Um, I've, I've, I'm going to send my um, Clippy can, my Clippy log file to the beacon folks. I tried. Um, they told me that it was because I was getting an error to do with an ADXL345. They say that it, that there's something in the configs. Rat rig config is so different too so but they say there's something in the config that was that was that was um, an adxl 345 line was overriding because they use a different um different board in their probe and it's got nothing to do with adxl 345 so they said it's something in there and if i if i couldn't figure it out i could send my click clippy log file and they could look and see if they could find something so be careful with the wire behind the extrusion. You usually get caught when homing. Yes. Oh, I know that. Yes. And I'm going to make sure of that. And yes, it was the Rapido. I've got the Rapido high flow. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to put it on. It was on the rat rig and I wasn't having any luck with the Rapido combined with the other extruder I had on it. So, but the rat rig's printing nicely now. Yeah, it's I couldn't, Nuno, I went through. Um, every aspect in the config file, and I and I commented out anything that had to do with ADXL three forty five, and just put in the beacon line that they say to for the probe. And when I did the um, when I went ahead and did a um, accelerometer query, keep, keeps coming up with the error. So 
I will send them that log file and hopefully figure it out one day. So, but right now I'm going to get some um, ABS for this. What's in here now? I don't think that's ABS. No, it's PLA. What do I have for ABS? And since it's going on here, we're going to make it the gold. So what was that? Um, that was 3D Fuel, if I'm not mistaken. 3D Fuel Workday ABS. No, it wasn't. Um, I want gold, or I can do it in black. I can just do black ABS. That's fine. Midnight black. Workday ABS. Look at that. Unopened, unsealed. It's going to be a little bit wet, but it's going to work. So we'll throw some of this. Oh, that's too wide for the bamboo, though, isn't it, for this? Um, oh, no, that'll work. So the 3D fuel spools work in here. We'll just print that part real quick. Just not on. I don't know, power to my, hello, wake up. There it goes. I just had to knock on it to wake it up. It wasn't pulling the ABS in. Okay, so throw that back up there. And let's go ahead. Um, here, let's switch over so you guys can share the share the fun. Let's open up Bamboo Studio, Bamboo Studio. Okay. Previous unsaved projects, nah, nah. So device, we have our. You mean no printer? Am I not logged in? I'm not logged in. Yes, continue to Bamboo Studio. There we go. Do you want to synchronize your personal data from Bamboo Cloud? Process preset filament? Yeah, I do. Of course I do. I always do. I, I'm not paranoid about whatever. So device, we're going to KPKP. No, no, we want our DWIT 3D P1P. Um, we want to go in here. Tell it that it is, I'm going to call it um, Bamboo ABS because it works just as good. And I'm going to call it black, but I like to make it like gray so I can actually see the model. And we're going to confirm it. Um, okay. And that's good. We'll go to prepare. We're going to find my file. And it's in my download folder. There it is right there. Should be a rather should be a rather quick print. Oh, I've got to go over here and I've got to sync my filaments. There we go. And we're gonna tell this that it is filament three. And then we're going to do four loops, five top, five bottom. 45% infill. This is just Voron standards and gyroid. Okay. Speed support we don't need. Quality now. If I slice, it should be like a 10 minute print. If that. What is this? Slice okay. Auto arrange. Get out of my face. 19 minute print. Whatever. Okay, so that looks fine to me. Da da da, it's gonna be nice and strong. And we will print plate. Set. And I don't know why, but my camera is not working on this printer, so but it doesn't matter right now. That's not a big deal. So we'll close that off. Close that. Close that. And we will get back to... Ta-da! 
where did the uh where's my chat there's my chat hey hello thomas maker viking how are you and hello to everyone russ gore i am jealous i am still waiting for your bamboo lab x1 carbon i'm jealous you're getting an x1 carbon this is just a lowly life p1p with a p1s cover on it but it still works good apparently they're going to release their um their a1 again in april they say in april so while we are waiting for this i am going to grab my cable this is the usb cable for the beacon and the probe so this is not the rev h probe this is the um standard probe this is going out the back oh this is the one where i bent the pins and um i kind of butchered the plug on this one so that's okay but we can make it work i'm just working on some posts and videos related to your latest model ah that's good to hear good stuff So this should still successfully, hopefully. Okay, let's, let's maybe this camera's a little better. If I if I go ahead and just oh, you don't like being moved manually, do you? But at the same time, let's just see if I can switch to that. Does the gimbal control work for me now? Oh, look at that. It does. It does. I'm actually getting control of my cameras finally. So I'm not jumping all over the place. This, I believe, is their 10-foot cable. I'd gotten this initially for the rat rig, but I don't need it for the rat rig. Yeah, this is their 10-foot cable. This thing's massive. But anyways... Um, Got it because I thought I needed it for the rat rig, but I didn't need it for the rat rig. But I may need it for this because it's going to go up and through all the loops and holes and everything. But let's just see. Am I going to be able to... So the 5 volts that. So that's the red. So that's going to go that way. And... Or did I totally screw this up? Oh, no. That'll still plug in fine to that. So that's going to be kind of like... So... So initially on this, um, I'll show you what I did here. Got to wait for that print to print anyways. So initially on this guy, um, I know you can focus. I know you can focus. There you go. So if I pull that off, you'll see these pins on here are bent outwards just because of the way i had it mounted on the um on the rat rig before and initially there was a uh, proper plug on this thing uh pointing up uh for this to plug into and so because i had to bend it down for the rat rig what i ended up doing was bending bending them out outward that way and then i just got to make sure that i have the red on the five volt and then it, it'll just basically plug in like that and it holds it holds fine been like that and it faces down that way 10 foot cable three meter cable well i don't know maybe it does say three meter cable oops wrong one maybe it does say three meter cable what's the bag say let's see the bag don't say squat so yeah, so that's the probe. Okay, so let's just unplug the probe for now. Keep it tucked away. Now the cable, oh man. Now here's where I don't like the bottom electronics. Talk about a spoiled brat, right? So now I'm gonna have to, while that's warming up and printing, I'm going to need to run this from here down to the bottom through man 
I'm going to mess up all my nice neat wiring because I've got to get it in through the drag chains. If there's room in these drag chains, there should be. But I have to undo them. And then, oh man, what a hassle. Unless I can just somehow... Oh boy. Unless I can somehow go from here... No, I don't want to mess with it. For now, maybe I'll just strap it on the outside. I don't know. Anyways, I'm just being lazy now. The instructions for your toilet say squat. <laughs> there you go, Andrew. Yeah, I don't like the instructions. They, they say squat. Ah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Okay. Don't be lazy, Tim. I know. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm not going to be, I'm not lazy. I'm just like, ah, do I really want to do this? But yeah, I got to do this. So we're going to run. I'm just thinking it's got to come up behind here because there's no way, there's no way for it to come up through here um, that I can see unless, no, the motor, no, there's nothing that comes right up through. So it's got to come up here. Um, I don't want to lose that piece. Now that I see it, there's a that little piece with the ins heat insets is right here. Get out of there. There we go. Oh, I just dropped it. Of course I did. Let me just go pick that up. Sure, dark. drop it on a dark rug too. There, ah, I see it. Perfect. Okay, the bamboo is starting up now. It's warmed up. It had to heat the bed up to 100. Shut the door. Um, yeah, so this is going to have to, let's get this one in. Let's go ahead and, um, oops, wrong way. It's going to move that over and we're going to zoom in a bit here. And we're going to raise it up a bit. No, we're going to not raise up that high. Stop what you're doing here, buddy. What? Why does that sound like it's... What? It's not pulling my filament through. What's going on? Try, let's try this side. What's going on, bamboo? <sighs> Better restart my print here. Just give me give me a second. Does the bamboo preheat for a bit when printing ABS or it starts as soon as it gets to temp? Now, it pretty much starts when it gets to temp. But something's going on with it right now. It's not loading my filament. It's been working great. Like, this this printer is flawless for now. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't like this. Maybe number three is not working so good. So let me just restart it real quick here. Uh -huh. AMS failed to send the filament. Yeah, I know. I see that. Let's try it again. Let's clear the error. Let's go ahead and print it again. Please check the filament above to specify mapping. Of course, it's doing it right. Oh, did I not get the proper mapping? What's going on here? Device. Oh, I changed slots. That's why. Shoot. I changed slots. I just have to quickly tell it what I've done. Okay, re-slice it. Print plate. Send. Hopefully this will work. It won't take as long. The bed is heated up pretty good now. So okay, let's see if that does anything.
hope you lazy, not on camera at least. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see, hopefully it's gonna pull it through this time. Might be an issue with my third slot. I haven't had an issue with this thing at all yet, so. Oh yeah, the bed's still pretty warm. Okay, so where was I going? I was going to this camera and I was gonna say that we're gonna run. So this guy is gonna come down under here and then just up. Yeah, and I gotta make sure that that is not going to interfere with my ZN stop, which is right here. And it's gonna hit there. And I just don't want that. So it's just, I'm just going to have to make sure that comes so it just goes in between here so it doesn't interfere with the ZN stop. Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm going to need to pop open these things, but I'm going to have to take it off and lift it and get it right underneath. Yeah. I don't want to do that, but I got to. So maybe I need to take, yeah, let's take the, let's just take the hot end off since it's off anyways. Okay. Okay. Let's back out on this here a little bit. There we go. Okay. I just want to make sure this is going to take the filament over here first. Okay, come on. Oh, we're just waiting for the hot end to heat up to 260. I just want to make sure this, this is going to go. And there we go, loading. Now it's not moving. There it goes. Oh, the spool's a bit too high, so when I put the lid down, it stopped the filament from loading. That's what it was. It's a little taller spool. So I just have to leave this lid... Just, be, just leave this lid so it doesn't quite close. That's what's going on. That's fine. Okay, I thought it was too good to be true that that spool, spool fit in there. I'll just keep that so it keeps a gap here. At least the chamber's heated. That's what's going on. There we go. So the 3D fuel filament spools are a little bit too tall for the AMS. What they should have done was make that dome on the cover a little bit higher so it could accommodate that. So... Okay. Okay, so let's pop off. I'm going to release this drag chain. So we're going to unplug this one. We're going to unplug the big guy, the main cable. I said we're going to unplug the main one. Never an easy task. There we go, come on. You can do it, there we go. Okay, that frees that up. I don't wanna take the, uh, I don't wanna take the, the, um, clockwork off if I don't have to. And then we're gonna undo these screws. So we can free up our drag chain. Then you wouldn't feel forced to buy bamboo filament. <laughs> there you go. I like bamboo filament. I got a lot of it over here. But um, I've got a lot of variety of brands of filament in the studio right now. So too many filaments. Polymaker is my favorite. Bamboo is a good filament too. Okay, so we've got the drag chain free from here to over there. Now I just have to undo it at this end. I think there's only one screw on this one. Yep. And then we'll get it through this one. Then we'll put this drag chain back. Don't fall down the crack, you silly screw.
There we go. Okay, so we got this drag chain totally free. So I can open this up and run the uh, bamboo cable through it. Problem is, Tim, they designed it to fit their spools to make you use their filament. I I can fit, um, you can go to, going can? No, I'm not going can on this one. I should, it will give me more room in the wiring. Um, the problem with that, Teza, is that, well, not a problem, but I do, I can fit the um, polymaker spools in there, no problem. And I haven't had a problem, mind you, I haven't gotten down to a near empty spool yet either. So I haven't had the problems with them yet. And then I can also, there's a few different spools that do fit in there. But yeah, so we're gonna pop open. Come on, am I opening the right side? Or is it this side? It's this side. So we're just going to pop this open. And hopefully I'm going to be able to fit that cable in here. With this other cable bus. If I go can, I could go can on this, but not right now. I, and actually, I have a can bus here, but it's a lot of work right now. I have a bunch of big tree tech, tech including the can bus, but... Yeah. Let's pop. Okay. So far, so good. And I'm just going to pop over here and open up the rest of these. Actually, I wonder. Let's see. I want to try something. I got the overhead cam in here. Oh, I don't have it on the, um, let's see if my overhead cam is working. Oh yeah, it is working though, but let's see if I can, if I can focus it so it moves over. Cause it is a, got a, it does have a, uh, whatchamacallit on it. So can I move over? Oh, wrong way. This way. Ah, oh, there, it does work. So I can move it over there, but it's kind of weird looking though, isn't it? It's almost like you're looking at me upside down, but at least you can see me popping these things open now. I'll just leave it like that for now until you guys get dizzy or, or seasick. It's meant to be a straight overhead. So when you shoot off to the side like this, it's not going to be the best orientation. And there's the last one. Okay. No, that's, that's, I can't leave it like that. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> and look at that. When I turn that, it's like, which way is he going? My goodness. Once you go can, you never go back. Yeah, no kidding. How can I, I wonder if I can, no, I don't want to mess with that camera too much. It's meant to be um, presets. It's meant to be pretty much a straight down camera. My belly. And then it's supposed to be zoomed in. Yeah, that's kind of what it's meant for, is that kind of view there. Uh, that's all right. Okay, we've got all these open. We need to pop off the end so that I can get the cord in there. This is all falling out. Of course, it's going to all fall out. What's this plug for? What's this one? Is this an end stop one? That just? What is this one with the open? Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, forget it. I'm just having a brain fart is all. Okay, so we'll pop that. That's completely out. This one, let's see if I can't squeeze the, uh, the beacon plug through here without popping that end off. Shouldn't be a problem. There it is. Okay, so we're going to need about... Oops, that's the wrong end. What just fell? I'm dropping everything now. Huh. It's the wrong end. It's got to come through this way. Come on. Get in there. There we go. Okay, so that's going to come down here. 
and I'm going to need more than two. I'd rather have too little than too much. Hang on a minute here. Coming back here. I'm going to come around and go down under there. So I'm going to need about that much. Okay, now the trick is, can I get everything back in neatly and securely with the beacon wire in there? So what we're going to do, that's about enough on the end there for sure. Gives me some play. I'm going to grab a zip tie. A beacon, <laughs> a beacon probe. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, you go for it, Nuno. A beacon probe for V zero bed meshing takes so long. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Um, yeah, I, I would. I would kill to see somebody put a beacon probe on a V zero. Maybe I'll do it. That'd be funny. That would be funny. Okay, so let's just get this temporarily with a temporary zip tie right here. Just to hold that wire from not slipping while I figure this other wiring out now. Okay. Oh, did I twist that? You idiot, Tim. I's an idiot. Ah, I got the wires twisted there. That's okay. I tried. I really did. I tried not to screw it up how did you manage to separate those this is tricky get over there there you go that's where you want to be Okay, now we're making some headway. Just got to get this started on this side. There we go. First snapping back into place. Okay, good. What's going on? And I've never felt the need of adding a probe, but I still think it would be funny to see a probe on a zero. change on these wires I gotta push these through more oh man what's holding oh there's that one I see what's holding that back could open up one of these where I put my little screwdriver um 
sure I was talking and I put it down. Probably rolled somewhere. Here, I'll probably use this. This is preventing me from no, where's that little screwdriver I just had in my hand? <laughs> oh lordy I swear they disappear I've seen it on other channels too it's not just me oh that's probably what fell um, where is it where'd it go it is that's exactly what fell Pull through. This should pull through this whole wire loom here. There we go. That's what we wanted right there. That's got to come out enough. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Good. That's extra long for some reason. That's okay. I can zip tie you down. Fair enough. Okay. There we go. We got that. So now we got that into that portion. So let's get this tied back on. And then we'll work on the other one. Or can to a V0, just everything bigger than a V0. Yes. Oh, I still have that. Uh, there we go. Where's the screw hole? There you are. There you are. Okay. So we have that. And then if we come up here, screw this one back on. And that gives me a lot. Oh, that gives me plenty for the probe. Good. I'd rather have too much and then deal with that than have too little. Have to pull it all the way back through. Uh, let's see, you have an EBB36 on your V0, but connected with USB makes the wiring so much easier and cleaner. Yeah, I have, um, um, I'll have to show you after. I've got a uh, different, sort of a little different setup on one of my V0s. But we're going to be starting the tri, the tri zero from scratch. So I, re I reached out to the company today to see where we're at with the, uh, the kit and the frame they're going to send me. So we're waiting to hear back from that. There's the one. Where's the other one? There it is. Okay, there's that chain back in place. Let's see if I can plug these wires in successfully. That one seems a little tighter, but I should be able to get it to work. There we go. That's plugged back in. This one is excessively long. So we're gonna zip tie that one off a little bit. Try zero needs can, then then we shall put can on it. I have a can. 
I'm waiting for Andrew to say something. He's probably not on anymore. Let's get this zip tie up through here. Get it started. And we're just going to make sure this is plugged in like so. And then let's just tidy these wires up a little bit here. That is looking good enough for me right there. And guess what? Bamboo just finished printing our part. Look at that. I mean, could I have timed that any better? I've got this in here. I can still pull slack from this end, which is good. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to come from here, we're going to come up along with this, and then we're going to go through this cable chain, and then we're going to come down and in somewhere. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Let's have a look at the piece that we just finished printing. Hot, oh, hot, hot, hot. Very hot, 100 degrees. Hot plate. <laughs> once you're in here, once you're here, you're here. That's all you can say. You have to be good. There's our piece. Thank you, Mr. Bamboo. You may, you may cool off. Take a break. Looks pretty decent. It'll do. Oops, wrong camera here. Let's do this one. It'll do. Come on, backside. Come on. Come on. Trust me, it looks fine. <laughs> uh, let's make sure it's going to fit the beacon probe. It should. Uh, where's my probe? Put it back in here. the bottom of the probe and it's going to fit nicely now that'll do just fine but I'm going to put heat I think I want no, they don't have it so you put heat insets in it but I think if I put a couple heat insets I wonder if they'll fit let's see do I have any in here? This is scrap full of everything. I got hundreds of heat insets. I just don't want to pull out my. There's one. There's one. I don't even know if that this will take a heat inset. I would have designed it for heat inset, but that's me. Um, I think I can get away with putting a heat inset in there, even though it's not designed for it, I think I can do it. If my heat inset iron will fit, it should, yeah, without melting the piece. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. And then just using like an M6 by, an M M3 by 3 or 4 screw. Yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, I'm just going to put a couple heat insets in that. You won't comment on my can. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm going to grab the second heat inset here. No. Nope. Where'd I put them? 
There they are. Okay, we're just going to quickly pop a couple heat insets in. Lefty, lefty, zoomy outy. There we go. And turn you on. I prefer using heat insets than tightening with a nut and bolt on this thing. That way I can put a flat screw in the bottom of this. Um, as I see, what do I have here? It's too long. Need a button head. There we go. That's going to be fine. Yep. Like an M36 button head. And I should have another one in here. There we go. Those will be good. Watching on the can saves for some crappy comments. <laughs> you guys are funny. I have um, one viewer on um, Twitch. It's good. Doesn't matter. Okay, so let's go ahead and pop these heat insets in here. Okay. It's time to burn, baby, burn. I need to ream out. I need to ream out this hole just a tiny bit. I think it's a three. No, it's not a three. It's a four. Yeah, just a... Where's my reamer? Here we are. Reamer. You're nothing but a reamer. And I'm just going to, just a little bit there. Come on. You stupid little reamer. And there, there we go. That should be good. Just to give my insets a base to sit on. And... I think that did it. Okay, one and God, don't fall over. Cooperate. Or else. There we go. And two. Good. Done. Let's move this out of the way. Cool it off. Now what I need to do... Just run some screws through because what happened is um, a little bit of plastic clogged the ends of them a little bit. So, but that's fine. Just have to take a uh, take a screw, run it through this end. And push that plastic out like so. And we're good. Worse than you remember that song when it hit the market. <laughs> streamer, I'm such a dirty streamer. Can you hit the like button, please? Oh, no. Okay. okay so that pushed that through. So now I should be able to take this, take my probe, and we're going to go... 
Nope, we're going to go this way with it. Should be able to take my little M3 screws through my probe into the probe mount. Here, let's, um, I'm hogging the excitement. I know. There we go. So we'll take the little screws in, zoom out, come on, too, too close, into the probe mount like this. Come on, let's get around, skittle around. And this one should. Get the teeth, bite it, there we go. Why are you not lining up? What's going on? Oh, you know, the heat sinks when you don't put them in exactly perfect. They get fussy, but that's okay. We make it work. And there we go. There's the probe mounted to the piece that's going to go on the stealth burner. And the heat sinks just make it a little more easy to, that way I don't have to tighten up a nut and a bolt. So there we go. I like it. Okay. So he pulls it out of camera view. I know, Tezza. Oh, I know. A cameraman I am not. Okay, so now this, ladies and gentlemen, should theoretically sit in here like so. So let's go ahead and put this in camera view for you just so you don't complain. Here. We'll try not to pull this one out of camera view for you here. Doop. Move this guy. Let's go up like this. Look at that. Now there's a view. And just because I like you all, I'm going to turn a light on so it's even brighter for you. How's that? See? And I'll try not to pull it out of camera view. So now we got to put this little guy on. And I believe I had M3, M3 Doomer Hickey size. Is it this one? Those are too long. Where are the M3s that came out? It's this one and this one. If I'm not mistaken, it's going to be this one. No, that's too short. Oh, come on. Maybe it was the longer ones. It must have been these ones. That's way too long, though. They'll stick out the back. I, I must have something in between. Hang on a sec. Hang on a minute. I made the turntable. Uh, my lazy Susan. I bought the um, I bought the piece underneath, or the um, I bought the lazy Susan hardware part. I guess if you want to call it that. And I made the rest. I think M312s. I think a couple M312s will be better for this. Let's see. Yeah, that's much better. M312s. I think that might work. 12s. Let's just try. What's the next size up? M312, M316s. One, two, two M three sixteen. So that's two different lengths. You look like a fifteen. What's going on here? There we go. Okay, that will work. Okay, so now we need to push. I need to put this piece in behind. Yeah, easier said than done. There we go. So we're going to hold that in. 
get at least one of these started. Hold that in. Okay, there's one. Now we'll get the other one started. Yeah, these are still a bit long. That's okay, they stick out the back. It's not gonna hurt anything. Camera's focusing on my hand now. Come on, don't do that. Don't do that to my people. Stay focused on here. Show us what we're doing here. There we go, okay. So we're just gonna tighten these up. <laughs> trying to get the camera to stay focused at the same time, but it's impossible because it's focusing on my hand. That's okay. Uh, that's not bad there. So we'll snug that up a bit. We'll push this up as far as it wants to go because we have to see how it's going to lie in relation to the nozzle. There we go. Okay. That's up as tight as it'll go. So let's have a look. If I put the hot end on, uh, I'm going to lower this a little bit so you can kind of see down where the where the probe is, and it's going to be in conjunction with the nozzle. It focuses on the closest object. Yes. Stealth burner just fitting a beacon probe. What tool head is that? Stealth burner. Oh, you already answered it. Ah, you guys know what you're doing. Okay. I like that picture. Love this camera for my close-up camera. I really do. Okay, so now we'll just sort of slide this in where it's going to go. Right there. Now we can see that. Oh, yeah, we got, we're got. we fine. Um, if I give you this angle here, I don't know if you'll be able to tell if I can get this to focus. Yeah, so you can see, um, if I, it's hard to see, it's, well, it's really tough to see, but right now, so there's the probe, and then the nozzle is about right now, oops, there we are. So the nozzle's about, oh gosh, I think we have at least three millimeters, like they suggest. I think that's almost going to be pretty much bang on. And the probe is set up as high as it can go. So if I take this ruler and I, touch the nozzle. Actually, better than the ruler, if I take my little level, touch the tip of the nozzle and make it level. Yeah, oh gosh, that's, a, that's almost the exact amount that they're going to recommend. There, it's level right about there. And I'd say, now if I do a rough estimate with my ruler, um, might even be a little much. That's about five get level. Oh, we're looking at about four millimeters, so it's not bad. And if I have to lower it to three, I think they say the maximum is a three millimeter uh, difference in height. There's lots of room to lower this because I've got it up at its maximum height, but I think I'm good right where I am. So I think that's going to be good right there. He thinks that's going to work. There it is. You can see that good there now. The camera's not up at the same level. There's a nozzle, but there we go. That's not a bad view of it. Um, I just lost the focus too. There we go. It's not a bad view of it right there. You can almost, you can kind of see if you stop focusing on the background, you dumb thing. Come on, focus up there. You can almost see right there where the probe is sitting just that little bit above the nozzle. So... That's going to be a, that's going to be a good amount. Yep, perfect. Demille, camera Demille. It's always ready for close up. <laughs> Autofocus has the personality of a cat. It sure does. Let me turn this light off. It's blinding me. Okay. Okay, so that's good. So we're ready to pop this 
we'll pop the hot end back together then I'll check on the time and and then let me just grab the get the thermostat plugged in there we go get the heater cartridge plugged in there we go that went actually easy and we'll check on the time where are we at oh 7:53 we'll go for a little bit more and then I'm going to take some relaxation time Okay, everything's back in there. We don't need that other wire that we had in there. And if I put the stealth burner head back on. Why are you not lining up on for me now? There we go. Okay, that's back on. Let's get some screws in here. Get everything in place, lined up. I'm no Cecil B. DeMille. I only wish. Close up. Closer together. There we go. And let's lights. And there we go. Action. Well, that light's a bit bright. Let's dull, Let's dim that light down a little bit. That's a bit better right there. What are you resisting? What's in there? There we go. And the two top ones. Um, you, oh, come on. You and you. You and you. Get out of there. Magnetic tray. It's a magnetic, ooh, a premature screwulation. <laughs> Oops. Rub the side of the plastic a bit. There we go. Okay, that's back together. We'll screw this side shut. And away. Then we just got to run some wire. But I think I'm going to, I'm just going to see how long I've been going. Okay, there we go. Stealth burner back together. Now we'll turn it over, we'll come over here, and right, I'm going to turn the light up again now, we need a bit more light in here now that we're in the back side, let's turn that light up, there we go, let's zoom in and focus right in around there, are you going to focus for me here, come here, come here, focus back here, okay, can I override the focus on this thing? No, I don't think I can manually focus on this particular one. You want to focus on here. So the best way to do that is to zoom out. Ah, uh, you can kind of see where I'm going here. But anyway, so this is going to plug. Now I'm just going to make sure where the five volt side is. Yikes. I believe it's on the other side. Yeah. We're going to plug this guy. Like so. I'm going to double check. I need to make sure that that's on the uh, 5 volt pin. 
the red one. Hey, Ben Brady, how are you, sir? So let's just have a double check here. I can't. Five. Yeah, I got that right. So you have the red pin on the, the red wire on the five volt side. So we've got a lot of excess wire there now. So what we'll do is I'm going to come around here and I'm going to pull some of this excess wire without putting any strain on the, um, on this. So that's probably good right about there. That's good. Now, as far as my Y end stop goes, let's zoom right out here, move you over. Oh, right here. So I'm just going to bring this back. And we are not interfering with our Y end stop at all. Because what's happening then is you'll see this, this little bit of loose cord right here is falling in between here. Whereas if it was hitting on the chain here, uh, I mean, that's unless the head is over more and it hits there, that might interfere with it a little bit, but I, but actually, yeah, it might. So we may have to, well, I just got to make sure then when I'm homing that the head is not in this position right here. <laughs> and if I have an issue with it, I know exactly why, but if I home here, I home over here, we're good. If I home over here, we're good. So it's only if I home in this one little narrow position that we're going to have an issue with this cable. I, I don't see a way around it because I can't come up through the other end, through the inside. It's got to come up and around and in this way. It's the only way it's going to work that I can see. So yeah, it's the only way it's going to work that I can see. But that's it. Now there's a Cecil B. Cecil B. DeMille view right there. Look at that. <laughs> so... Oh, that's great, Ben. I'm glad to hear that. Up through the tool head sensor wire path. Um, how, I guess, so you're saying, so you're saying, maybe I'll look at that, but you, so you're saying maybe come over here, up through here. Come in here and then up through here. That's a possibility. Um, let me think. So if I, okay, let me have a look. Before I close her down, I've been going what now? Almost two hours, which is okay. Before, I'm just gonna, let's, let's go ahead and let's take this cover off. Let's have a look inside and see if that's a possibility. I don't have to rerun it. I can, I can run it through up here and down through there. Let's see. If that's doable. So if I come through here, um, I'm not going to be coming too close to the hot end. Uh, let's see. I think I see where you mean, but I don't know. Um, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have to have a look at that after. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of, that, but that'll be good. I, if I can sort of run it around front here somehow. What do you mean you smell smoke? Boron noob, how are you? Goes to a set position, then homes Y. Yeah. Home X first. Yeah, there's a lot of ways around it. But I mean, yeah, if, if I could figure out a way to run the wire through the tool head path, that would work too. But it's a pretty thick wire. And if I come to, if I come down through here and then out here and around, I'm, I, I fear I'm going to be too close to the hot end with this cable. Um, and I can't come through here because the, this is blocking it right now. I, I think, I think I'm pretty much where I have to be. I'm going to, 
yeah, I, I'm going to leave it like this for now, just for the sake of simplicity. If I run into too many problems, if I do run into ongoing problems with the um, with the homing and that being an issue, then I'll then I'll then I'll look I'll investigate other options. But I think we're going to be okay. And as you say, I can uh, program it to home X first. Uh, and maybe even where it goes to the set position to home X and Y, it's not going to be an issue. But the beauty of it is, is what the heck? You know what? Let's let's fire it up. Did I drop the plug? No, I didn't drop the plug. Let's fire it. Let's just, as a last thing we do here today, let's fire it up. Just because it's, I'm just not going to... Um, it's going to home X and Y then Z, so I can shut it off before it home Z because it's not. I'm not going to be able to home Z right now. We know that because it would be a catastrophe. We'll fire it up and see what it does when it goes to home X and Y. Do 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 do. Nice cool names. Cool names. Okay, we're fired up. We'll just leave it like this. That's a nice view. I like that view. Yeah. Okay. Mainsail. Try again. Unless it gives me an error. No, it's not even going to give me an error. Okay, well, let's just, um, let's see if I home X. Okay, X home fine. Now let's go ahead and home Y. That's fine. So let's go ahead and move. Let's go ahead and move it maybe towards. Whoops, wrong button. Come on. Let's just do, why are you not moving Y? Oh, gosh. I had it set to 0.1 millimeter. And I'm wondering why I'm not seeing Y move. So I'm just going to put it in a random, random spot. Now, if I do home all, and I'm going to definitely stop it before it does all. So let's see what it does. Boom. X first, then Y. And no problem. So, uh, oh, good. It's not going to home Z because um, I took the um, I took the Z sensor off Z, but I want to move it. Um, it's going to home X and Y again, so I can move that back to where I want it. Okay, now we're going to move, and we're going to move X over. There we go, and we'll shut her down. So yeah, it homes X first. And so it homed X first, and then it homed Y. So this wasn't in the way at all. So there's not an issue with that cable. So we're going to be fine like that for now, as I say. And, you know, down the road, I can always change that. It didn't home Z. Uh, it didn't home Z because it's not detected. The switch is saying it's open uh, because I unplugged it. So it's... Uh, it, it didn't try to home Z, so there was no catastrophe to be had there. So there we go. Okay, let's see. You can home independently. Yes. They both smoked a lot. Who smoked? Oh, you're talking about something different. <laughs> so now the what I've got to do is run this down this chain and it's got to go down um this goes down here it goes over here and then through this one oh i'm going to run it through all i got to run it through this one and i got it running through this one i'm not going to start that right now because i really don't want to it's friday night and i need a little bit of a break my drink is empty and i've been going two hours so
probably the wrong type of smoke too. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Impromptu stream. We still have one diehard Twitch watcher. It's probably me, but uh, that's it. That's all. I'm going to call it an evening and uh, maybe depending on what I'm doing, the weather's crappy here this weekend, so I'm not going anywhere this weekend. So, so we'll see, but maybe I'll pop on tomorrow sometime and we'll continue getting this set up and get the probe working. And then, so we just got to run the wire, plug it into the uh, um, Raspberry Pi, do some firmware configuration, blah, 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 and we're all good. So thank you everybody for staying on and keeping me company. I do much appreciate it. And we will catch you guys a little bit later. Bye for now. Have a great Friday night. Stay out of trouble. You too, Andrew. Stay out of trouble. Bye.